Hey everyone. So, non-stop here all the time. As I've mentioned before in several videos, whenever we get a new boa of any kind, be it a rosy boa, a rainbow boa, a new Imperator, they all come in. They immediately go into quarantine, separate from the other ones if we can, and then they get tested for IBD or inclusion body disease, which is a form of arena virus. So, we are here with our Argentine Max Pink Boa, as well as two new Rainbow Boas that we kind of spur the moment picked up, like too good of a deal to walk away from. So we're here at Aurora Animal Hospital, the place where I think is really good, the best place in Denver to do any of your exotic stuff, and we're gonna go get them tested. Well, here's our little uh, Argentine boy. He's fun. <laughs> So we're here at Aurora Animal, as said previously, with our uh, best vet in Denver for exotics. Okay. If you guys uh, ever want to check out the podcast too, then we do that before. But as also previously mentioned, the car we do testing for arena virus, i.e., IBD, for every single new bow that comes in. So that's what we're doing. So with these guys, definitely that screening is super important for arena virus, which is the causative agent of inclusion body disease. More common in boas, we do sometimes see some pythons affected, but boas are the classic species for it. And as you've probably mentioned in some of your podcasts, um, you know, inclusion body disease can be quite catastrophic to get into your collection, and it can cause a variety of symptoms, anywhere from just vague lethargy and immunocompromisation, which makes them more likely to get respiratory infections, to the more classic form people think of with the neurologic signs, with the stargazing and the you know, wobbly heads and things like that. So definitely a great idea to test these guys to make sure that you're not introducing anything like that into your collection when you can. He All otherwise right. looks great. Yes, he is a wonderful, gorgeous, giant baby. You are. Because yeah. it's, it's hard to believe he's a 2021, only fed every 10 days on mice. Really? Yeah, yeah he's no, grown he's <laughs> Good, like Bob for boas is absolutely wonderful. And yep. So there are a couple of different ways to test. One of them is to get a good esophageal swab and up the colana as we come out to get some good respiratory cells in there. And then we can do PCR to check for that specific virus. In ideal cases, we want to have a blood sample too, but this is a little too small to get blood on. Yep. Yes, very cute though. All right. Rainbow Gorgeous. You will also be too small for blood. Yeah, unfortunately. They still have a really good rate of sensitivity, sensitivity and specificity, so accuracy on yeah. just the esophageal swabs. I mean, that's what you took from the anaconda. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. You are gorgeous, and you look great also. Hey. And none of these guys are showing any symptoms, correct? Mm-mm. Good. I mean, it's not a whole, it's minimal interactions while in quarantine for very obvious reasons. Yes. But yes, it's. Hi. All right. Squirmy. And so we're just kind of talking while this is happening. Um, there is, there are several different uh, tests for this done, correct? Yes. So, so the PCR is where they're actually trying to detect the viral particles themselves. And that is um, kind of considered the gold standard. You can do it on the, you know, the swab, which is straight out of the esophagus, esophagus and respiratory tract itself. And you can also run that off of what they call the Buffy coat, which is a small portion of the blood that does contain a higher volume of those particles compared to the rest of the blood sample. So in some cases you can even do a CBC where you're looking at all of those red blood cells under the microscope and you can actually see the inclusion bodies which are small particles within the cells themselves and which is why it's called inclusion body disease. It's based on the appearance of that viral particle within the cells of the white blood cell. So that's um, kind of considered one of the less sensitive forms of it because not all snakes with the virus are going to have those inclusion bodies, which is why we do the PCR as well, mm -hmm. looking specifically for the virus. I was going to say, if I remember correctly, wasn't that um, the way where they recommend testing multiple times because it doesn't always present? Yes. 
And so in some cases, also, if it was a recent infection, you may get a false negative. Mm -hmm. And so depending on when they were infected, they may have it, but just not be having it in large enough amounts to actually be able to detect it yet. So that's why we always recommend repeat testing, usually three to six months later, depending on the virus and if there's symptoms and you know high how risk we are, to determine that they are a true negative. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Get back in there. The door will be but smaller. You do seem a bit feisty. I know it. <laughs> All right. Let's get your swab real fast. And then he is big enough that we will attempt a blood sample. It's not always successful. They have small veins that aren't super close to the surface. So while we try our best, it doesn't always work, but we'll give it a try. So just trying to get some good cells onto this swab here. Make sure we get a good sample the first time. Hi. And getting that swab is very superficial, so it doesn't hurt them at all, even though it looks sometimes a bit drastic. <laughs> it does look very invasive. It does, but uh, also really keep, I mean, that's... much smaller than the uh, prey that they're eating. Correct. <laughs> All right, so I will need <laughs> I will need someone to hold you so I can try to draw your blood. <laughs> that is the snake jewelry. Yes. Come here, bud. Give me your hand, please. Oh, you're super spermy. Extra premiums? Yes, if you can hold the table. Give me your face. And I need to draw blood from right there. So the ventral tail vein is the most accessible vein in snakes, which runs just right here along the bottom middle of the tail. They also have their musk glands in the way. There are lymphatic vessels as well. And this is a very, very small vessel, if nothing else. So that's what kind of makes it a bit challenging to get a good blood sample. And depending on the species, some of them are easier to get blood on than others as well. I find pythons to be a much easier blood draw than boas, just in general. Seems like pythons in general are just easier to deal with, <laughs> just kind of period. Unless you get all their respiratory viruses involved. <laughs> yeah, valid. Don't do it. There we go. We try to go as close to the vent as possible because that's where the vein is going to be largest, but especially in males, then you also get hemipenes in the way, and that's where the musk glands are going to be more prominent too. So it's a fine line trying to stay away from those structures while trying to get close to where the vein is going to be the most cooperative. And another possible way to get blood is to actually do a cardiac stick so we can actually draw blood directly from the heart. I tend not to use that unless I desperately need blood. Oh, here it is. Um, because as you can imagine, having a needle in the heart does pose some risk for complications. Yeah, I'll pretty much veto that most of the time. Yep, but here we have a nice beautiful sample. Look at that. Hooray! Gorgeous. So, next set for these guys is mailing off to University of Florida. Yes, they are considered the best as far as viral testing goes. Yep. And so, University of Florida has the most advanced vi virology testing that kind of set the standards for all the other labs that they use. So, whenever we're screening and looking for potentially the different strains of arena virus, because even within that virus there can be different strains, that's the lab that I generally recommend starting with. Yep. So there you go, everybody. Uh, not only is quarantining your animals super important, uh, doing stuff like this, including Nido virus, is uh, always a good idea to do because even your $40 pet snake can introduce some stuff that won't end very well, as I have mentioned several times in the past. <laughs> yes. So we will have a conclusion about these guys in a few days once we get the results back. Might be a few weeks. Might be a few weeks. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yes, it does take a while sometimes. <laughs> Well, it's been a couple weeks now since we got them tested and the results came back today. 
all of them negative for arena virus or inclusion body disease IBD, which is awesome. So with that being said, they are still in quarantine. They just now can be housed together in the same room and I can kind of clean up the area that I had them in separate from all of the other snakes that are also in quarantine. So they're all going to be put together. They're all going to be still interacted with on the same day. I'll still probably do the boas last in general, but at least this way I'm not having to pick and choose days and times and everything like that. So it'll make things a little bit easier for me when it comes time to actually starting to plug them back into where they're going to go individually around. Um, I'm sorry I don't have them physically here in front of you for the video, which would be very nice, I know. But things have been, have been absolutely insanely crazy around here. I, I know I, I brought it up a few times during the reptile tour videos, but we have a bunch of really crazy, big, hopefully good changes coming here at Jay-Z's Reptiles. And if you want to know a little bit more detail before that comes, go check us out on Patreon. There's a whole bunch of different levels from, you know, just a dollar to higher up that includes, you know, free shirts, free wristbands, online videos, Q and A's, everything like that. So if you want a little bit more detail before I announce that, cause it's still gonna be a little while, go check us out on Patreon. But otherwise, please stay tuned for a bunch of really cool updates, a bunch of really cool changes and plenty of reptile content in the meantime. And hopefully you enjoyed this. I know it's not the most informative and entertaining reptile video that we've done, but I think testing your boas and staying up to with everything that we have learned about a bunch of different, you know, the zoonic diseases with arena virus and crypto and nidovirus and things like that, that people need to take a more active, proactive role in helping their collections and their pets. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Again, sorry, I don't have them in front of you today, but I will have a bunch of really cool stuff for you coming forward. Hope you're having a great day and we'll check you next time.